Alright guys, so I'm going to put the mount on here. Got as close to the middle as I could with the mount that I have with the three, three screws there. So with that bracket, we're going to attach it to the mount facing the screen. Alright guys, I'm put the, put the camera on a tripod and we can watch the mounting of the Epson 5050. All right, guys. She's up there. The Epson 5050. UB. Looking nice. It's a huge projector, man. That thick cinnamon. Audio Quest. Got the power cord hooked up, mounted, surge protected monster power. Oh, yeah, I don't mess around there. Yeah, mounting was fine. Got it all level. What's incredible about this projector is the uh, automatic lens. So you're able to. Hold on. So you're able to move the lens left, right, up, down, focus, um, and also uh, keystone if you need to. So you can get it perfectly fit on your screen. It's very easy to do. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do now is just play some scenes for you on this projector. And uh, we'll talk about it a little bit after. All right, let's enjoy some scenes in the wrap cave. Nanotech, you like it? A little something. Like Dr. Banner, if the rest of your green friend won't be joining us. Ah. <laughs> gotta get that stone out of here now. It stays with me. Exactly. Bye. <laughs> What's up guys? As you can see, I'm in my robe because it's very early in the morning and I've been up all night watching this incredible projector in the raft cave. I uh, hope you enjoyed those few scenes that I played. Um, those are just some scenes I was watching last night. But let me tell you guys. Okay. Now, as far as native versus E-Shift. The E-Shift looks good. The only thing I can notice is there is a slight... Smoothness to it. Now, not like it's blurry, not like it's soft. I'm talking a hint of just, it's a sleek image. It's just, it's kind of hard to say. Native, maybe the, 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 the text might be a little crisper. That's just words and stuff. That's just text and maybe some edges. But as far as enjoying the movie and the close-ups of the face, I can see pores. I can see all that stuff fine. Just for like text and, and, and things like that, there is just a slight uh, softness to it. But that can easily be remedied with a slight increase in contrast or some kind of an edge enhancement, which there is plenty of on this projector. So from visually just walking down the stairs, turning around, looking at this TV, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, this doesn't look native 4K. 
It's really, really good. Now, the benefit of this Epson versus my Sony is the deep blacks and the contrast, the brightness of the colors. That is improved. This does 2,600 color lumens, million to one contrast ratio, where the Sony was, was good. What I had to do with the Sony that I had was put in the, the gamma curves to try to boost the HDR color. But with this Epson, out of the box, put it in the various picture settings, color just popped. Brightness was there, black levels, because it's got, it's got ultra black technology with the iris. The iris will open and close and let light out or close and leave less light coming out. Now, the, the iris on the Sonys, they, they didn't give that to you till like 695, which is like 10 grand. So having that iris on this is pretty cool because that does make the blacks better. Um, I haven't had this calibrated. This is I'm just kind of tweaking here and there, but I'm very pleased with the picture. I don't know if you remember, if you saw that uh, Batman scene, when they show Batman, I mean, it, it is nice and dark, and uh, he looks like a menacing figure. And then with the close-ups, you can see his eyes, but when he's walking towards the screen in that beginning, all black, it just looks really cool. Background is just gorgeous. Aquaman looked great. Avengers, you know, Endgame, all that stuff. Terminator was fantastic, the, the opening. The camera doesn't do it justice, guys. No, it looks much better here. Ah, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy I have this. I have no regrets. Uh, Epson is is fine for me now. I don't know if you've heard of some kind of I don't know what what's going on with this this uh, dust inside the lens and whatever you talk. I don't know what Epson you guys are talking about, but this filter here easily can re be removed and put back in. And uh, I'm I'm confident that uh, as long as you have a clean basement. They shouldn't have any dust getting in your projector <laughs> that builds up and causes image, uh, Im Im bad images. So anyway, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to continue to tweak it. I'm going to look online, see if there's any uh, tips on, on color settings and stuff. And maybe I'll put that in and see what it looks like. Now, this isn't a detailed review or nothing. I don't really do a lot of detailed reviews. Uh, another great thing about this Epson is the amount of information it gives you when you go into the info screen. I'm talking all kinds of bit ratings and color and HDR, SDR, what frames. It is awesome, the information it gives you. And there are a ton of tweaks for the picture settings that a calibrator would have a lot of fun with, which I'll do later, uh, Geek Squad calibration for sure. But I have to wait about 100 hours and only have like four hours on it right now, so it'll be a while. But I'm just really glad that I have a projector again. And now... I can game on this projector. This has a low latency. It's about 24, 24 milliseconds, which is fantastic for a projector. HDR, 4K 60 hertz, which the Sony did not have. The 285 got up to about 24 frames in HDR. And anything beyond that, you'd see color banding. Really gross. But this one's fully featured. Full inputs, which is awesome. What can I say, guys? Epson is pretty cool. I like this projector. I, I can experience the three LCD technology with E-Shift. Uh, I'm liking it as far as DLP and, e, and uh, three LCD goes. Three LCD will definitely give you a brighter, more colorful picture. The DLP will give you a slight crisper, sharper image. But you could have rainbow effects. And the spinning wheel thing, mm, that's just one more part that can be uh, damaged. So this is good. Fan noise. It's fine. I'm keeping it at medium. If you do go into the high lamp setting, uh, you could hear it. But if you have a nice home theater, not an issue because your sound is going to drown that out. Love the, the, the lens as it opens up. That That's just slick. Covering up the lens when you're not in use, pff, that's premium right there. I've never had that technology or that kind of feature on my projectors. But that right there makes me smile every time I turn it on. Turn it off. Just close that lens, cover it up, protect it. It's fantastic. That's just awesome. Yeah, that's great, guys. All right, well, if you have any more requests on this projector, let me know, uh, and I'll make some more videos of it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to continue to tweak it, continue to play stuff on it, and uh, make some more videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching this. You guys have a great day. Uh, I'm just glad I have a projector again in the RAF cave. It's complete. Home theater rules. RAF out. Thank you.